Welcome to another video. This is another MIT Integration B problem and we're about to solve it. But before we start, I want you to give it a shot and just look at it. It is the product of three trig functions, the same function, different arguments. Do you know the trig identity that's going to save you for this one? Because unless you know it, integration by parts will be very hard or impossible. I've never tried it for three functions. That's going to be super hard. Okay, so you want the trig identity that's going to make your life a lot easier. And if you don't remember, you want to try to recall the angle sum identities, like what is cosine A plus B. It's going to be cosine A, cosine B minus sine A, sine B. And you want to do for sine also, what is sine A plus B? It's going to be sine A cos B plus cos A sine B. And if you do for the minus options also, the subtractions, you have four identities and from there you can build any identity that is required in this one. Okay, but let me just tell you what you need for this video and then we'll get into it. What you need is the identity that converts a product into a sum. And what is that? It is basically this. Recall this. That if you have the cosine of A times the cosine of B, it is basically one half of the cosine of the sum plus the cosine of the difference. This is all you need to remember. Now, if you don't remember this, this is going to be a very tough question. If you can't remember it, remember I told you, just go back and work it out and find the identity. Unfortunately, at the integration B, you, you're given three minutes to answer the question. So you can't say you need to go rework this to find what this is. Okay, let's move on. So we're going to convert this product. Well, now you can choose the two small ones, you can choose the two big ones. I like to do the big ones first. So I would rather take cosine 2x, cosine 3x, multiply together so I have something easy on the other side. Okay, so we're going to say that this integral is now equal to the integral of cosine x times, instead of writing cosine 2x, cosine 3x, I'm going to replace it with this expression, which is one half of cosine. This is now my a and this is my b, so it's going to be 2x plus 3x, that's going to be 5x, okay, plus cosine 2x minus 3x is going to be minus x, but it doesn't matter. Okay, let me just write it. Remember, cosine is an even function, so it does not matter whether it is x or minus x. So you can actually just leave this as x because cosine is an even function. Don't do it for sine, remember. So here we go. This is going to be equal to, I'm going to pull this one half to the back because the one half multiplies everything. So it's going to be one half of the integral of cosine x times cosine 5x plus cosine x. dx, what is my dx? Come on. Okay, so this is what we have now. Now see what has happened. What was a product of three functions has suddenly become a product of two functions because if I distribute cosine x, I have one term and I have one term. It's easier. Two is easier than three, so let's move on. So if we do one more step of this, what do we get? This is gonna be equal to one half times the integral. If I distribute this, it's gonna be cosine x, cosine five x, plus this is gonna be cosine squared x dx. Okay. Now, I know how to integrate this if I change it to become cosine 2x plus 1 with 1 half beside it. Now, you have to recall this too. So, this is identity-packed integration exercise. So, you go here again. This is going to be 1 half of the integral. 
Now we're gonna rewrite this again using this formula because this is a product, we need to change it. So this is gonna be one half of, it's gonna be cosine of the sum, which is gonna be six X plus the cosine of the difference. X minus five X is minus four X. We're just gonna write four X because the minus doesn't matter in the case of cosine. And we're done, we have rewritten it. And then we go here plus. Now, what's going on with this one? Remember that cosine two X is the same thing as two cosine squared X minus one. This is an identity you have to recall from the double angle identity. That is cosine A plus B is equal to cosine A cosine B minus sine A sine B. And then you use the Pythagorean identity to eliminate the sine squared. And then you're gonna have minus one left. So here we wanna write this isolated. So if you move this one here, you have cosine two X plus one equals two cosine squared X. So cosine squared X can be replaced by, if you divide both sides by two, that's it. So I'm going to replace cosine squared X with this identity, which is gonna be um, one half of cosine two X plus one. And everything is still DX. Nice. If you make a good observation, the two terms on the inside each have one half. So I can pull out the one half and use it to multiply this so that my next line is one fourth of the integral of cosine six X plus cosine four X plus cosine two X plus one. Everything DX. So I put all the boundaries for this problem because the original question required that it went from zero to two pi. So let's see what we get here. This is gonna be one over four times. We're now gonna start integrating because we can integrate each of this. This is gonna be sine six X over six plus sine four X over four plus sine two X over two plus, this is gonna be just x, evaluated from zero to two pi. This is one over four times, if I plug in zero to this, it's gonna be zero over six. If I plug in two pi, sine 12 pi is still zero. So this is zero. The similar thing happens here, it's zero. When I go here also, it is zero. When I go here, it is two pi minus zero, it's two pi so that one quarter of two pi will be pi over two. And this is the definite integral. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.